What if I told you that not behind every great bass riff there is a bass player? Today we're taking a look at some iconic bass lines that were not composed and performed by whom you think. First up is Love Gun by Kiss. It is common knowledge that one of the most recognizable Kiss bass lines was composed and performed by lead singer Paul Stanley. Paul famously wrote the song on a flight back to New York City and as soon as the plane landed, went into the studio and just recorded the whole thing. The song was working just fine, so bass player Gene Simmons was okay with it. Love Gun features a simple yet pretty catchy walking bass line and to this day it remains a classic. <laughs> Beginning with the Love Gun era, KISS members started writing and recording separately, especially on the Dynasty album. The disco-inspired bassline of I Was Made For Loving You is also performed by Stanley. Mm, yeah. Gene Simmons' lack of involvement with the bass guitar and with the band in general would last almost a decade and he did not perform on the majority of KISS catalog in the 80s. I've made a whole video about it. Check out the suggested videos at the end. Next is Behind My Camel by The Police. The instrumental song out of the Zenyatta Mondata album was composed by guitar player Andy Summers. It features an Arabic style guitar melody, hence the title, and a repetitive bass riff played by Summers himself, because Sting refused to record. <laughs> Police frontman hated that song so much that one day took the tape with the recording and actually buried it in the garden of the studio. Drummer Stuart Copeland was not in favor of the track either and played on it only because there wasn't anyone else to play drums. The song was released and even won a Grammy for the best rock instrumental performance in 1982. Good job Andy. One of Bon Jovi's biggest hits, Living on a Prayer, features a monumental upfront bass line. The recording is credited to then bass player Alec John Such, but in reality it was performed by ghost player Hugh McDonald, who would eventually join the band in 1994. Despite all the credits, McDonald played on every Bon Jovi album, except for 7800 Fahrenheit that has Alec John Such on bass guitar. Apparently, though a better musician, McDonald didn't fit the strong image of the band in the mid 80s, so he had to work behind the scenes for a decade. After leaving Bon Jovi in 1994, Such ended his music career, while McDonald was announced as an official member of Bon Jovi only in 2016, 22 years after joining the band. Though it can be easily mistaken for a guitar, the main riff of Deftones Needles and Pins was actually recorded on bass, which wasn't performed by then bassist Chi Chang, but by guitar player Stephen Carpenter. <laughs> Rock the Casbah of the Clash also features a very driving bass line. The song was composed by drummer Topper Haddon, which played piano, drums and bass guitar, intending to show the demo to the rest of the band. When singer Joe Strummer and bass player Paul Simonon arrived in the studio, they found it just perfect and left it like that. If you know Paul Simonon, you can tell it's not him on bass. With its trademark hammer-ons, the bass line is really cool and unique, complementing perfectly the iconic piano riff. Another very prominent Clash bass line, the Magnificent Seven, was also not performed by Simonon. The song revolves around a catchy bass loop composed by Norman Watt Roy of the Blockheads. <laughs> Speaking of punk, we cannot omit the Sex Pistols and their only record, never mind the bollocks. The majority of the bass work on the album was recorded by guitar player Steve Jones. Sid Vicious, their bass player, had just started playing bass and he was almost unable to play. On top of that, he was being hospitalized at the time of the recording of the album, so he couldn't do much. Apparently, they kept some of his playing on bodies and God Save the Queen, but he got doubled by Jones and buried in the mix. The whole album features linear and flat bass lines that just double the guitar, except for Anarchy in the UK, which was an earlier recording and features original bass player Glenn Matlock, who left the band before they could hit the studio. Matlock was already a trained musician and had some really good bass lines intended to end up on the record. Check the demo versions of Pretty Vacant and No Feelings to get an idea. The 
fretless bass line in Pink Floyd's Hey You wasn't performed by bassist Roger Waters, but by guitarist David Gilmour, a more adept musician that could play parts that Waters was unable to. Gilmour played bass on a number of Pink Floyd tracks including Young Lost, Pigs, Ship and others. Also in the famous one note intro of One of These Days, it's Gilmour on bass, but there's another track played by Waters. Apparently Waters played with a pick on a bass with very old strings, while Gilmour sort of slapped on brand new strings. The combination of the two is what you hear in the record. And finally, the Beatles. With a band full of talent like this, you might expect musicians to swap instruments. What you might not expect though, is that one of their most iconic bass lines, Helter Skelter, was performed by guitar player John Lennon, while bass player Paul McCartney played guitar. I have read somewhere that Paul, the writer of the song, had John on bass in Helter Skelter precisely because John was not an expert, and Paul wanted a ragged sound. If you listen to the isolated bass track, it's all but flawless. But it was meant to be a dirty beast and its imperfections make Helter Skelter a perfect rock and roll masterpiece. A few other Beatles tracks have bass recorded by John and George Harrison, with two of us, featuring Harrison, being the most notable, in my opinion. We're on our way home. That's it for today. Let me know in the comments if I forgot something. I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Please hit subscribe and follow me on Instagram for more.